Hello and welcome to the Auto Inform How To Workshop. My name is Anton Zarev and this month I'm going to be looking at the very quite common problem uh, we see in everyday workshop which is the mass airflow meter. On this particular vehicle we've got the Mondeo TDCI. It's a standard hot air mass airflow meter. It's a very important sensor to the engine this because what it tells the engine's computer is exactly how much air is entering the engine. This is obviously needed for accurate fueling. Um, so if that sort of misreads the air going into the engine, the computer will try and compensate, which can lead to several problems, which we'll all go into. So how do we test it? Pretty simple. What we've got here is uh, four wires. Usually you've got a 12 volt supply, two earths and a signal. The output signal is usually the one closest to the engine, but obviously it's quite easy to, to find it. I'm going to be checking the fueling as well on this car. So what I've connected is on the press, rail pressure sensor, I've gone into the output wire. What That will tell me the pressure generated by the, the, the high pressure fuel pump. So all we need to do now is run the car and I'll uh, briefly explain what's going on on the screen of our oscilloscope. I've got both sensors, zero to five volts, which should be sh sufficient. What I expect to see on a healthy airflow meter is around five volts peak. Um, usually, I expect to see, depending on the model, between four and a half to five volts. If it goes any lower than four and a half volts, you're looking at poor performance of the vehicle. It's very sensitive, the sensor, so I don't really want to see anything less than four and a half volts. So if I can get James to start the car. So I've got my red channel which is the airflow meter, the blue is the rail pressure sensor. Uh, I'll get James to give you a full whack. If you can cut the engine to me, James. I've got a very clean signal, very close relationship between the airflow and the rail pressure sensor. I've got four volts on the rail pressure sensor, which is pretty much at its maximum, likewise with the airflow meter. Now, what I'm going to do is, rep is produce a problem on the car and show you how we can detect this using the oscilloscope. Uh, what I'll do is just take off an intake hose which will give me a very severe air leak probably a bit more severe than what you would do on a discreter air leak but nevertheless the principle is the same what I'm basically doing is uh, bypassing the air that's going to be flowing through the engine letting it escape now the other effects of this could be a blocked exhaust or a blocked intake both reducing the airflow through the engine so as you can see I've got a big split now the air is just going to come straight back out and hopefully we'll see the result so just to refresh your minds what we had from uh, the good test we've got around 5 volts on the airflow meter and 4 volts on the fuel the rail pressure sensor very good results just as expected so if I get James to run the car. And full throttle, James. And cut. So as you can see from the results, we've got a much more sluggish performance the actual waveforms are not mirrored anymore. They're very spread out. That just shows how much unresponsive the engine has gone. Now the very important thing to notice is that my airflow meter voltage has dropped just under 4.5 volts. Not a great deal, 0.6 of a volt, but it just shows how much influence it's got on the fueling. I've got much less pressure in the fuel rail. I've only got 2.5 volts down from 4 volts. 
just because I've just dropped 2.6 volts on the airflow meter. Obviously I've replicated the problem myself by undoing the intake hose, but in the real world situation you could have a blocked intake, blocked exhaust, EGR valve stuck open, but it gives you a very good idea of how critical that airflow meter reading is. Just 0.6 of a drop and I'm getting very low fuel pressure, very sluggish performance, possibly some fault codes relating to EGR flow when really it could really not be anything to do with the EGR, it could be a blocked exhaust or a blocked intake. The computer finds it very difficult to detect these problems because of the nature of the fault. It never really shows up that it's the airflow meter that's at fault. So a very simple test which I hope you can apply in your workshop. So thanks for watching. Till next time. Cheers.